Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And you guessed it, my friends. We have another amazing guest this morning. I don't know how you keep doing it, but you do. Uh, you are the best, most awesomest community of amazing, legendary badasses. <laughs> did I just say that? You damn right I did. All right, my friends, uh, as always, uh, you can get a text message reminder when we start this. Sh oh, my gosh. I think I just got my text message reminder. Look at that right on time. Oh, there it is. You see it. You see it. If you want to get a text message reminder where you can click a simple little link and head on over to watch this live every weekday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, then you can uh, text WUL to 813-296-8553. The number's on the screen. And throughout this uh, show, we're going to be posting our guest social media links on the screen so you can find and follow her as well. She is a osteopathic manual therapist who's using the power of storytelling uh, to reel R-E-E-L, real, get it, <laughs> real in her audience. With that being said, Care, a.k.a. Care Bear, welcome to the show. Hello, hello, good morning. Good morning, all the way from Canada. Canada. I'm in the middle, I'm right in Manitoba. Manitoba. For my hockey fans, it's go Jets go, but they just got knocked out, so. It's yeah, okay. I'm, I'm paying attention to more basketball right now, I'm sorry. That's okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We have an amazing hockey team, surprisingly, right here in Tampa Bay, Florida. Yes, you even do. It's really hot, but yeah, you uh, do. we've been kicking some major puck over the past, I don't know, almost decade, I guess, or five to 10 years, something like that. Well, I always, cool. laugh. I always laugh at Stamkos because I'm like, you Canadian boy living in flip flops, heading to the rink. Like, you're living the dream, man. Absolutely. But the Panthers are doing great. The Panthers are doing great as well. Very, yeah. I think we got knocked out by the Panthers, if I'm not mistaken. I actually think you that, correct. Yeah. Yeah, that, that Tampa Bay got knocked So anyways, we've covered our sports. That's what's going on in the world of sports right here, my friends. Let's talk about what's going on in the world of digital online marketing. So this is your second time on the show. We mm -hmm. were on back in July of last year. So um, tell us what brought you to this whole wild world of online marketing in the first place, and then we'll catch up from what's been happening since July. Yeah, great. So I'm Care. I came from, well, I'm still in the manual therapy world. So in Canada, um, to be an osteopathic manual therapist, you are not a doctor. We are in like allied health world. So we are like massage therapists, chiros, physios, like privatized clinic style. <clears throat> so both my husband and I do that and it's wonderful. We love it. It's great. We did 10 plus years each of schooling and we're very proud of our practice and, and it's great. Mm. However, when the pandemic hit, because of the class of therapy we're in, our clinic was shut down for almost three months. Mm. And yeah, we had some padding, but you kind of realize, oh my goodness, trading services for money and, and things like that is has its um, challenges. And especially when both of us do that and then come along kiddos who get sick and you have to take time off and cancel your patients and all that kind of stuff. We just really realize, you know what, once we catch up from this pandemic hit, we got to figure something out and we got to figure mm -hmm. out something else that we can do alongside this. And so we've always wanted to do digital um, courses and things like that in our profession, but not yet. We're mm -hmm. still babies in our profession. So that'll come. And so um, I decided I would start learning this now in a different world so that I can mm -hmm. kind of be ahead of the game when we get there. Um, and here we are a year and a bit later. <laughs> wow. Well, great, great thinking. Um, and so any regrets about going ahead and, and starting before you were quote unquote ready? In Is that a fact, smart move? It was the best move I've done. <laughs> and and truly, I mean, this digital world's crazy. And and yeah. when I was on the outside, I kind of went, what is this? Like this can't, <laughs> this is, this is wild. But again, I was at home during the pandemic and we have to take continued education and make sure our credits are up and we're up to snuff in our professions. We were doing all of that on Zoom. We were all doing right. that digitally. So 
yeah, <laughs> it was time. Yeah, the world was already beginning to come into this, you know, fast forward into this or catch up with this whole digital revolution that was happening. And it suddenly became socially acceptable, right? Correct. It was no longer kind of weird to do medicine even or do therapy, maybe not manual therapy, but yep. but uh, uh, psychotherapy, counseling, see doctors, uh, you know, they, they suddenly the process of elimination became popular in medicine, right? Because, you know, okay, I'm, I'm not in front of you, but let's try this and see if that works, right? I mean, I've got lots of doctor friends, not lots, but enough to know that they've had to adjust to this digital world post pandemic. And so, uh, you know, it's obvious as well. You mentioned Gwen before the beginning of the show, and uh, she she uh, is a um, audiologist, right? And so, um, you know, she's given us a unique perspective of uh, somebody who, you know, is a doctor who came in. Plus, we've had people from all other walks of life, teachers and so forth, who have come into our community. That's only a fraction of the people who have come online or been forced to look for alternative sources of income or just evolve their business model to be able to survive in this post pandemic world. And so talk to us about what it was like getting launched. I, I believe I read that you, um, you went through the challenge in like February, we're able to get launched in, in March. So talk to us a little bit about what that process was like in being new at something in learning something, uh, and, and, uh, you know, sharing that time, uh, as well as, um, you know, not just learning, but actually getting into launching and, 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 and putting what you were learning into practice before you even knew really what, you know, you were getting into. And, and I'm sure there were lots of questions and doubts in your mind as, as you were doing that. What was that process like for you? If you can take us back to February, March of 2023. Yeah. And you know what? It's it's only over a year ago, which time flies by, but it, it was such a different time for me mentally. Like I was so mm. like, okay, I guess I'm, I'm doing this like, and I want to do this, but like A to B, even A to C. And it was like, it was a hard mindset thing of being like, am I going to actually be able to do this? So uh, February, 2023, I'm on holidays in Florida, um, enjoying myself. I went, finally, I have a chance to purchase this course. <laughs> I purchase it. I'm binging it while I'm sitting on a lounger. It was great. My mother-in-law was like, what are you doing? I'm like, just listening to a podcast. It's fine. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I came home. I had my meetings with my business plan advisor, Bonnie. Shout out to Bonnie. Oh, another Canadian. She's the best. And um, so, yeah. And then by it, it was just crazy because it was, it, it was just, it's another language. And it's just like when I went to school, it's a different language. Mm. And so you have to learn these things. And so you're doing these actionable skills in terms of like creating a funnel and creating an email domain and all these things. But you're also learning as you go. You're like, why do I need this again? I know I'm supposed mm. to, but why do I need this? And mm. so as you're absorbing it and really actually comprehending why you do these things, all of a sudden you've got it all on the table and you're ready to go and you go, oh my gosh, I guess I'm pressing go. <laughs> I think, and you learn as you go. And, and I think that's what the process has really been and continues to be. I know a heck mm -hmm. of a lot more, mm -hmm. but there's really no time where you're really ready to put your big girl wings on and fly until you just jump. And so I made sure the fundamentals were there. I learned and comprehended as much as I could. And then you have to fly. And boy, is it scary to fly, but you have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the process. <laughs> and, and I think people might look at you and think, wow, what a professional and what a what seemingly confident person. And you're saying that you felt the same things as so many of our people express that anxiety, those doubts. What limiting beliefs specifically come up for you that you re that you remember being most prevalent? Well, I'm a perfectionist and a type A, which is part of the reason I got to the profession I'm in. But it also was a limiting going, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can't be perfect. And in fact, I now tell people, 
that's your superpower because we are so past the point in social media and just media in general of perfection. We can mm. see through it. It's bullshit. And so you being normal and relatable is the real deal. And that's what I'll say sells, but also like connects you to your audience and those kinds of things. And so it's, yeah, <laughs> it's true. And, and if you admit that you don't know everything instantly, they're like, well, then I want to, I want to talk to you because you're actually going to figure this out with me. Mm. Um, but other than that, like limiting beliefs for sure, perfectionism. Um, I was, of course, because of my profession, a little nervous of people seeing me and finding me. Um, but you probably don't remember this detail in particular. But last year when I was on, maybe five people in my life knew about it or had mm. seen me. And most of which it's because I told them to this day. A year and a bit later, there is still only maybe 10 people in my life knowing that I do this. My parents don't even know. My in-laws don't know I do. Like, it's it's hilarious because I fit it into my life where it's not really, it doesn't consume me. Mm. And so that was a limiting belief. But again, as I realized, people weren't really going to find me unless they're looking to do this online. Mm. That's yeah. Really where the works. It's been great. Wow, man, that is that is powerful, uh, really. And I, what I most, what I'm most intrigued by is how you've done this without it consuming you, because I think that there's two elements of that. The first element of, is, of course, the mentally consuming. Am I going to agonize over this? Am I going to make this a miserable experience? And part of that is the perfectionism is the comparisonitis that, that we always talk about. Am I going to let those elements dominate me or am I going to have fun? And am I going to have some awareness around those things and work to overcome them? Let go, uh, let God, <laughs> if you will, right? That, that was a re that's a recovery phrase. Um, but, but really it just means let go and let God or the universe or the marketplace sort of take over. Uh, you put it out there. You don't really control it at that point. Um, am, am I going to embrace those? Now there's also the physical time aspect in the physical space aspect of working 12 hours a day on this and, you know, you know, being glued to my phone and computer all the time. Talk to us now about since you covered a little bit of the the mental or the mindset aspect in how in some of the limiting beliefs you did need to overcome. How have you not allowed it to consume you from a physical standpoint, whether that be time management or you know being glued to your phone all the time or fitting it into your already busy schedule? How, how have you done that? Well, like everything, it's a work in progress. <laughs> but it, there are ebbs and flows to this business as there is with any business. And so at the beginning, did it consume me a little bit more? Of course, because I was learning it. I was a complete beginner. And again, that perfectionism, you know, is making sure I wanted to make everything perfect. As it goes, you kind of realize, well, hold on. I don't need to put that much energy into being perfect. Okay. So take that off the plate. Let's just make sure it gets out there. Cool, but you got to spend the time to do that. And as you go, you get quicker at posting and doing all the behind the scenes things. I mean, that's the one thing we love about this business is most of it is automated. So as long as you can make sure that the parts that are not automated can become habitual and hmm. scheduled in, it's usually a perfect marriage. Now I have a five and two year old. So when I started, I had a four and a one year old. Wow. So it had its challenges and my husband would be like, oh my gosh, okay, like, come on, we got to figure this out, which like with the time management that is. But again, as time has gone, it's gotten better. Now I will say I've had a few videos kind of go crazy over the year, of course, and, and different things take off. So that takes a little bit more time management. But um, really, if you schedule it in, truly, um, it's totally manageable. And that's someone who's working a full career that I run the clinic. So it's really more mm. than nine to five and wow. um, a five and a two year old and a husband and a social life. And I play my own sports and my own activities and the kids activity. It's a lot. Wow. I mean, <laughs> you have a full life. You I have, have a, a life. full life. You're living, a, you're living a full life. And this is also a great 
this is a great talk for those of you who are not feeling fulfilled in life and you think that just it's about a financial solution. Well, it, I mean, that's certainly, we can't, we can't ignore that as if that doesn't matter. And this is also about learning to enjoy life, learning to step out of your comfort zone, learning to, as I'm working on my business and I'm going to work on it intensely, it's going to be uh, emotionally and mentally draining, especially at the beginning, as you pointed out, do I have any hobbies? Do I, how am I taking care of myself? You know, oh, you know, let me be more intentional with my kids when I'm with them. You know, th this this can benefit all areas of our life if we allow it. And I think that you you know what you're saying right now is a great a great example of that. And is, is those are some of the thoughts that are coming up for me. I wonder what's coming up for all of you that are listening to this. Where may having your own business benefit you and be a a be an addition to your life instead of a, a subtraction and not particularly just an addition in finance finances, because I find that those who only focus on finances don't achieve them as fast because that's kind of how the world works. Like whenever you're looking for something so hard, you never find it. But when you sort of let go and just put in the work and, and let things unfold, uh, and what you're talking about, hey, how can I create more of a whole, well-rounded life? How can my business actually encourage me to do self-care? How can my business actually encourage me to be better at time management? How can my business actually encourage me to get better sleep so I can wake up an hour earlier and maybe work on my business in the morning before the, the kids wake up? Mm -hmm. uh, is this resonating with you? Am I hearing you correctly? And, and has even though you've had a full life before this, has this also challenged you to be more intentional in these other areas of your life? 100%, 100%. And it, truly, it, it's allowed me to access a different part of my brain I didn't know I had. And it's funny, because I've all I was a massage therapist before I came in before I went into osteopathy. And, you know, your brain is just always in that. How can I help that person? How can I fix them? How can I do this, 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 and it's in a very mechanical brain, whereas mm -hmm. This world has really tapped into my analytical brain. And it's just mm -hmm. like, it's a totally different mindset. And the conversations my husband and I have now are so different. And how we are consumers is so different. And again, it allows me to be truly intentional in my time. I am away from my phone. It has given me more time and space with my kids mm -hmm. and my family. Um, but it has also... Um, revived a piece of my brain I didn't really know I had or I mean mm. I did but I never exercised no yeah, that's very very interesting and I think that's what new experiences give you I mean that's what being a student in a lifetime learner and somebody who's willing to try new things uh, even hard things even try new challenges you know um, when when I love this an, a, example, you know, Michael Jordan was so great at basketball and he would always, even during his career, sneak off to the golf course because it was a game that challenged him. And you see that with a lot of professional athletes who are great at what they do. They pick up other things, other passions where they're new again and they're actually challenged because it keeps them fresh. It, it keeps them it, it keeps that, uh, that, that learner, that student, that their mind sharp. And I think that for a lot of you all, it's, you know, there's, we have to adjust our expectations and also frame coming into this differently. You may be a professional, you may be good at what you do, and you may just expect that coming into this, you're immediately going to have great results and not have to do the work. But the truth is, is that embrace the suck, embrace starting at square one in building self-esteem, rebuilding confidence, reinvigorating your, um, you know, that, that kind of honeymoon phase of something, you know, uh, 
my experience is as much as it sucks at the beginning, a lot of times I romance and reminisce about what it was like at the beginning now that I'm further into my marketing career because things were so exciting back then. I was always learning something new. And now as I've been doing this for 13 years, I really have to try harder to stay challenged and invigorated and even motivated. And it really is all the same formula. It's tr doing something brand new. I can remember when I, when I started doing this show every day, it was a, it was a, I had never done something like this. I had never, I had gone live before, but I hadn't interviewed my own clients every day for 45 minutes. Uh, that was a, it was even hard to learn how to have like a two way conversation and ask people questions because I was so used to just always doing all the talking in my videos and it was a challenge for me. And now I've gotten, now I still rant on, as you can see, I'm doing right now, but I also have gotten better at asking questions and interviewing people. And, and it's been quite exciting to go on this journey and I'm still excited about it. And this show has become a huge part of our business here. And it's just a, a, an example that comes up for me. Um, what has been a, a surprise for you in terms of what uh, you've been able to, whether it be the feedback or how you have been able to do something that at one point you were watching other people do and wondering if you could be successful at it. I can imagine that you know, you've got some cool friends. Gwen, you mentioned her, you're connected with her. You're, you're kind of connected in, in kind of hanging on the same level as, as some of these badass marketing legends out here. D did you, do you pinch yourself now? I mean, what are you surprised about? How has this business, how has this business surprised you and delivered over delivered something that you didn't expect? Yeah. I mean, it's such a good point because <clears throat> I think when I really compare my, you know, traditional education to something like this, something that it's not that I am surprised, especially now, but the support is unbelievable mm. in this community. I mean, like Amy and I, Amy hires and I talk back and forth, Sarah Thompson, Kelly, like all these people. And it's like, you know, these are some top dogs mm. and I can ask them questions and they're going to respond to me. And I have a community of five gals who we are all affiliates for LM. And we kind of sit there and we kind of just like, we talk about it and, and we're just friends and we actually help each other and we're here to lift each other up mm. and not critique each other. And we're just there to support each other. Mm. So that's definitely a surprise. I think the other piece too, that is surprising to me is the fact that now in my own profession, um, I'm on a committee with our board and our association to kind of figure out how our therapists can responsibly do this as an additional avenue and venture and and making sure that things are appropriate because of course in this world you can't just be going out and, and saying whatever you want especially in the health field you can't be making crazy statements and things like that so to protect ourselves but i'm a part of that and i'm pretty like knowledgeable if i might say so it's kind of crazy to think that that is also evolving from this and and mm. you know there's there's a future there which is very um exciting and interesting to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's very cool. It's, it's, it's wonderful when you start to connect your worlds and bring them together and, uh, it no longer, you, your life doesn't see, cause at the beginning, as you mentioned with family, with friends, with career, everything's kind of compartmentalized, mm -hmm. but then at a certain yeah. point you kind of start slowly to kind of blend everything together. And then eventually, it's hard to really tell when you're working and when you're playing. I mean, at least for me, you know, I, that's another way that I've blended my, my life together. Uh, my kids don't, and, and this is because I work from home. My kids don't really know when I'm working and when I'm not, you know, um, they, they, uh, and I like it like that. Right. It's like, it's like, I mean, they, they still, they still see all of, they still get all of the work ethic. They're incredible hard workers. We do chores. We, uh, we finish and follow through with things. We have routines. Um, my, my, my eight-year-old's a competitive dancer. 
my son is a, a wild three-year-old, but he's, he's, they don't need to see me working 60 hours a week, coming home at night. They don't understand that. That's not how children is all they understand about that is daddy's gone. Where's daddy? I, I hate when he's working. I, I wish he didn't, you know, I'll, right. That's been, that was my experience also as a child, but uh, I've been able to teach them all of the principles that we hope that our hard work will teach them, but while still being at home and integrating my life together by focusing on activities, routines that they understand, that they can participate in here at home. And I'm doing that without homeschooling them. It's not like they're homeschooled. They do go to school. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they go to Montessori school, which I love. But they do go to school. And so uh, it's it's quite different from the way in which the majority of us were raised to, you know, you know, unfortunately unfor or unfortunately, I, you know, if I think back to like where I learned my hard work, it's less about what I saw my parents doing in terms of their profession as well. Now that I'm reflecting and it's more about the way that my dad and stepdad and mom helped in my baseball career when I was younger and the emphasis they put on practice and hard work and consistency and also how I saw them working at home, cleaning and taking care of the home, et cetera. Um, I learned a lot about, so I just think this is breaking a lot of the traditional uh, ways in which we think we need to pass things on to our children um, and, and we can, and also the further we get into our career, as you said, we can begin to integrate things and actually be proud of what we're doing instead of be so nervous that it's going to turn people off and turn people away. I've actually found that most traditional business people are enamored by what I do and want my knowledge and, in 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 are envious of the lifestyle so why should I be afraid to let them know what I do? Well, I got to go at my own pace. I got to do what I'm comfortable with. And in some cases, not letting friends and family know is just appropriate. However, the large majority of the marketplace is pretty damn interested in what you're doing once they find out what you're doing and how you're doing it. And they're wondering, again, as you said, how can I apply that to what I'm doing so I can have more freedom. Is that the vibe that you're getting as you're introducing to people? And it's exactly what happens, right? Because as soon as some people kind of figure it out, or maybe they reach out to me or whatever it is, they're like, well, how, I don't even know how I could apply this. And I'm like, well, let me tell you, give me your three ideas. And they're like, okay, this and this. I'm like, well, here's how this would pan out. You can either do it this way. You can do it this way. You can do it this way. And I just, it comes out. It's so yeah. quick because I've been doing it now for a year. Um, yeah. And I've always had a little bit of a creative brain when it comes to entrepreneurial, but you know, I, I've got a friend in the wedding business. I've got a friend in the contract business. I've got a friend in the DIY business. Like, and they all are like, okay, what would you do if you were me? I'm like, well, I'll tell you. <laughs> and right. you, and you should, because trust yeah. me, when you're sleeping, things are going to be still rolling. So you should do that. <laughs> Anyways, that's a lot of what my DMs really are is, okay, I, I think this is what I want to do. What are your thoughts? And yeah. I shoot them straight. I don't, yeah. you know, what's the point if I'm not? Yeah, absolutely. I, I've, I've had that same experience and it's quite a, uh, it's quite a high income a uh, set of skills and knowledge in terms of suddenly how you can uh, diversify your business by not just talking about it, but eventually if you wanted to consult, you know, that's one of the four core four ways to sell information online. Courses, coaching and consulting, doing live events or doing affiliate marketing. And that coaching and consulting aspect can be a very lucrative and also a very um, non-labor intensive because you're the brain instead of the brawn in the business. You are the one who's telling them what to do. And if that whether they implement it or not is not your job. 
You're just simply mapping out the strategy for them. Now, you can then, if you wanted to get creative and add another stream to your consulting, one aspect of my consulting is I'm going to tell you how to do it. The second aspect of my consulting is once I tell you how to do it, tell you everything that you're going to need, I will then give you the option whether you want to implement that on your own or whether you want me to help you implement that, right? Hopefully that got some wheels turning for some of you out there because that's a wonderful way to present consulting to people and to create a, 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 um, another tier of income opportunity for yourself as well as value to your client. Serve, serve, serve. What comes up for you as I, as I, as I say that? It just, I think a lot of people who enter this space think that this is a short term thing. Yeah. And this is exactly what you're talking about is a perfect example of how there is such longevity in this, no matter what it is. If you're in the travel niche and you want to do travel stuff, guess what? If they really liked what you suggested and all those things, now you can coach and consult them about booking their next trip and you could plan it for them or not. It, you know, like there's just, you could do this in every niche. It's not just this niche. <laughs> And the um, the longevity to it, and and it, it this business just blows my mind at all times. Is really like I almost become speechless because the opportunities are endless, and they can you can go in whatever direction you want. And because not everyone's going to be comfortable in all of those things, someone might think, "Oh my gosh, I'm never going to do a mastermind in my life. Why would I ever do a live event?" fine. You don't have to, but let me tell you, jump, jumping on a zoom one-on-one -on -one chats might be your thing and yeah. you could get paid for it. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, there's, there's within the core four business models that we teach here, there are endless ways to skin a cat, to earn a living, to, um, serve individuals, and businesses or business owners. And as you said, in multiple uh, niches, no matter what your passion is, uh, the the same exact thing, and I am just reaching for a, a, a niche that is uh, random coming up for me, a dog training niche, uh, you know, I could offer that same exact consulting package to a person who wants um, help with training their dog. My entry level is my course. My uh, next mid-tier offer is my consulting where I'm going to get on. I'm going to listen to the specific problems that the person has, and I'm going to write a prescription, right? I'm going to give them a game plan. Here is what you need to do. It's sort of like in the same respect, I could offer somebody a custom training plan. I could offer something, somebody a custom dietary plan. I could offer somebody a custom rehabilitation plan. Okay. And then, oh, you have, you're well off. You have more money than time. Okay. At the end, whether you want it or not, I, I'm just going to offer you and let you know how I could help you implement this if you want my one-on-one -on -one coaching um, as well as implementation, or you can take my game plan and you can implement it on your own. Either way, you're going to have clarity uh, about the next steps and the best approach to take to solve your problem. It, it's, it's, you know, there's, there's, like I said, there's so many different ways, live events, doesn't particularly mean that I have to do a live event in, in, in person. I could do a live event on Zoom now, okay? Uh, we just gave uh, an example of that here last on this last Saturday. We did a faceless following um, workshop uh, where we had a few thousand people on learning uh, that particular skill set. And uh, that was a form of coaching slash live events. Um, obviously, we've we've got courses as well. So you know, the, the, the interesting thing here is, is that uh, in this community, not only do we teach you, but we're also eating our own cooking. You know, we're not saying, hey, go sell T-shirts. Hey, do print on demand. Hey, do drop shipping. Hey, do Amazon. But quietly, we're making all of our money from selling courses 
And I don't say that to toot my own horn. I just say that, you know, when there is so much on the internet, it is important to pick a, uh, a community that, that, uh, that's transparent, that has integrity, that can teach you both how to convert, but also how to be compliant. You you uh, touched on that. And I'm glad that resonates with you, the compliance aspect. Um, what what How has that changed your thinking of, as we've really, at the beginning of the year, started really uh, bringing the hammer down and saying, look, we we need everybody to follow these guidelines. We need you to uh, pay attention to your compliance, get educated about this and be in compliance. Um, what has that brought up for you in terms of your thinking about both your business now, but also your business long term? Well, a few different things. Like first thing, every business has compliance and regulations and protocols and things like that. I mean, in our, my world, they call it a protocol. It's the same thing. There are rules. And so I, again, being the type A personality, I like to A, follow the rules and B, be with the best of the best who are going to run the rules. And, and by run the rules, I mean, follow them. Yeah. And so I'm so happy I am where I am. It makes me so, so thrilled. But listen, when all of all these compliance things come up, I always just say, what are we all here for? What, what's really the whole point here? And, and a lot of people go, well, you know, I want to make this much money. I said, no, no, no. Back up. Besides the money, if you had all the money in the world and you retired tomorrow, okay, there's you have more than enough. You have billions of dollars in your thing. What are you going to wake up and do? Are you going to go to the gym? Are you going to eat healthy? What what makes you tick? And they're like, well, it would be blah blah blah. I said, well, then that's probably your niche because that's probably what you actually want to do. Don't go into something with different intentions. And I think that's where the compliance piece comes in is I think intentions shift. And um, it's it's just really interesting because I think real people out there don't who don't know this world, right? Like this is the game of Jumanji. Like the digital world is a totally different world. And then they step a foot in and they get scared and they go, well, I don't know what to do out here. And so again, this is why people play in different niches, right? But then once they realize what they what the whole point really is then they can spread their wings and that's where i think compliance is super important because people actually can understand what rules to follow within their their world right yeah. if that makes sense hopefully. yeah yeah no i <laughs> the the jumanji uh analogy is 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 cute um you know, yeah, I, I agree. And it's a part of growing up. It's a part of also becoming legit and learning, you know, learning that uh, being an entrepreneur comes with more responsibility, not less, you know, um, and uh, there there is consequences for actions and there's and ultimately you're the one as the business owner who's going to absorb those those consequences. It's not somebody else. It's you. And so um, so it's it's important to understand the rules of the game. It's un important to understand the laws. It's important to understand and even to you don't have to be an expert, but it, but you learn, you strive uh, to both to both have ethics and integrity in your business as well as to follow rules and laws, even if you don't agree with them, right? And, and, and that's that can be difficult for people. It's also difficult for people to follow rules and regulations and laws when they see other people who are not, because it's like, well, what about such and such? And that's a difficult, that's, that's a difficult choice. Um, and we all get to choose who we want to follow, who we want to listen to out here, who we want to learn from, and whether we want to, um, you know, listen to people who are telling us the truth, which is sometimes not easy to to say or hear. Right? The truth is not always easy to say or hear, but the people who have had the courage to tell me the truth. In, in, in help me to navigate landmines, to not get myself in trouble, to stay out of legal trouble, regulatory trouble, 
um, you know, here in the gov in the in the United States, a great and I'm sure you you have it there in in Canada too, as much or more than we do. Um, there's so many entrepreneurs who are constantly trying to figure out how to pay less taxes. They think they have the wrong accountant. They think they have the person who's not helping them to you know. Well, I heard that Jeff Bezos pays no taxes, and I heard that Donald Trump pays no taxes, and it's just they read a headline in the newspaper or saw a meme on Facebook and suddenly think that they don't have the right accountant. And the truth is, is that you don't know the full story. You don't know if the headline's even true. And what I've learned, for example, about paying taxes is it's better to just pay your taxes. You, you get a good accountant. Your, your accountant's going to sign off on your taxes. They're going to do everything that they can. If you've got a good one, in, 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 for example, I've got one that my uncle used for, for, for 25 years in his business. And that man is as cheap as anybody that I know. I mean, he's frugal, he's smart with his money. So I know that he's questioned the guy. He's made sure they were getting all the, doing all the work. And, and if I want to, to have more money left over, I need to focus on making more money, not trying to avoid paying taxes or avoid, um, you know, avoid following the laws, right? And the same thing goes with how I market my business. There's certain things that are maybe not regulated by the police department, but they're regulated by other agencies, government agencies, federal government agencies. And you don't want to get in trouble with these guys. You don't want to get on their radar. You, you want to follow those rules and regulations. You want to stay in their good graces. You want to respect them because they can make your life miserable if you come under their scrutiny. And so you, 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 it's better to avoid that than to bury your head in the sand and think it's never going to happen to you or that you're too small or, or, or it's, you know, well, so-and-so is doing it. Why can't I? Well, that's the difference between being a leader and a follower. And so, you know, here at Legendary, we, we, uh, we try to be the mentor, if you will, that gives people the news that may not always be fun to hear, but is exactly what they need to hear if they really want to have a, a real sustainable business that you can sleep well at night and not have to worry about backlash or consequences, legal, ethical, et cetera, down the road. And uh, you'll learn that you, know, you can have a beautiful business that blends both conversions and aggressive marketing. You don't have to be soft or kind of tiptoe and walk on eggshells in the marketplace. You just have to make sure that the marketing that you're doing is not deceptive. It's it's telling a full story. It's it's letting people know that you you know this is what most people do. It's it's most people do nothing with this, but I'm trying to change that with the resources, the training, the support that we provide. And we've got a pretty good track record of doing that. So let me ask you, what are you ready to commit to, right? It's not about us. It's about what the customer, the, the student, the person who's buying the training, it's on them. And we need to be reminding people that it's on them. We're not going to do it for them. You're, if you're in the information business or the coaching or mentorship or course creation, you're not, you are not magic. You don't have the power. Even a doctor doesn't have the power to magically heal people. They have to go home and follow the diet, take the medication, do the rehab exercises at home. You know this as well as anybody. You know they, they, they can come to PT for a half hour a couple of times a week, but you also prescribe exercises, stretches, things that people need to do at home, and their results depend on how committed they are to following that regimen. Am I right? Yeah. And I mean, <clears throat> to quote Amy Heyer is smart people get the facts. It is what it is. And so to me, in my business, what I'm doing now, because, you know, those those tax quotes you were saying, that, that's clickbaity stuff, right? So people think it's always good and, and too good to be true. And if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is, you know, in some shape or form. And so for me, I'm actually pulling a lot back from clickbaity stuff. Not that I had a ton of it, but a little bit for sure. I had my ebbs and flows. Um, and I'm really more focusing on, as you said, information business. I am educating the public with 
the research and statistics and the facts that are out there that people need to know about the digital marketing space in 2024. Like it's not going anywhere. So I'm just, my job is to educate people and really try to hit home with them of how anyone could do this. Here's the stats, here's mm -hmm. the facts, but you have to want to do it. So that's where I'm redirecting traffic and really trying to just educate people and, and empower them truly that they can do this. So that's kind mm. of, yeah, that's my goal. Yeah. I mean, substantiating the things that you're saying is very important, you know, and if you're going to make a claim, make sure that you have the evidence, the documentation to be able to back that up. Not only is that the the right thing to do, it's the legal thing to do. It's, it's also it's also best practice in all industries. I mean, if you go to a basic Wikipedia page and there's all these things that are written about somebody, they have all the sources at the bottom. I mean, same in all medical documentation, same in all uh, most professional documentation or where somebody uh, has, has made a claim of some sort. There's some sort of substantiation to be able to back that up. And that's, that's, that's great. Using stats, using documentation. I gave people a great example uh, last week. If you want to share all of your income and how much money you're making, you know, go over to EO Fire uh, and uh, look at how um, uh, entrepreneur, I'm sorry, it's, 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 yeah, EO Fire. Sorry, I spelled it wrong on my side. Um, look at how uh, John Lee Dumas and I'm considering. I'm I'm thinking about doing this as well. It's just such a cool way to give the full uh, story about your income. If you want to share your income, you want to be, uh, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Income Claim. Well, it, you know, f look at look at how this guy does it. It's such a cool. It's such a cool way of doing it. He he um, he shares his you know he shares his entire income report. Uh, it's not you have to you know you have to include what your expenses were as well. You know I it's not this. just it's not just about uh, it's not just about your um, you know it's not just about your you know how much you made. I mean, it's it's also about um, here's the full report. It looks like. Hold on. Let me see here. Uh, yeah. He gives a every month and it's such a great learning. I've always looked at John Lee Dumas and thought this was a great idea. Um, and it's so educational because you can see that his income was one sixty two hundred and sixty two thousand. His expenses were seventeen thousand. His net profit was one hundred and forty five thousand. Now, remember, John Lee Dumas also runs these core four business models. He, and you can see all of his income down here. He runs affiliate marketing uh, and he gives a breakdown of where everything came from. Um, uh, three value bombs each month. You'll never drift to success. It's either you live the life you designed or live the life you don't by default. You have your F6 goals, faith, family, finance, fitness, fun, and friendship. Uh, to, to, you know, to have what other people have, you have to be doing, be willing to do what they did to get it. Uh, you know, um, it's just, it's just, it's just a really cool thing here. He's got his, his, his breakdown, you know, product service income. Uh, he sells a, a journal, uh, that brought in a, a $1,200, $1,200. Um, you know, he podcast sponsorships. I'm sorry. The majority of his, his revenue comes from podcast sponsorships. He's got a really popular podcast and he brings in 150,000 a month from, um, from uh, from 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 podcast sponsorships, he's also got affiliate income here, five thousand in affiliate income. You know, promotes ClickFunnels, Bluehost, Audible, ConvertKit. Um, uh, so, anyways, he's got you know a full breakdown of of his income here, and um, I, I know in the past he sold some courses as well. Uh, I believe he may make those available from time to time for a limited time. He's got his expenses, though. Everything's outlined clearly here. You know, this is an example of evolving your, uh, your if you want to make claims, you want to talk about your income, then give people the full story of it instead of just, that's, that's an example of substantiating it, right? And being, and offering transparency 
to where you can give people the full story. And that's when people, we evolve our, our, our marketing in this whole entire digital marketing space, which we're not going to be able to change everybody, but we can evolve it to a place to where people are not as skeptical and they're more open because they have the full context, they have the full story, whether you're providing sources, whether you're providing articles, data, stats, income reports, whatever you can do to provide value, if you're in this niche anyways, to provide value in the form of transparency and and information about where your information is coming from, the better. Yeah, and and I agree. And 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 providing information, statistics, results, whatever it may be, reports um, for different things too. Like I'm, I like to provide that for my audience, my target audience, but also for my niche. And if I can blend them both, even better. But you know, yeah, it's um, it's important to do. And and honestly. <laughs> Going back to my schooling, I had to write a thesis for two years. And that is not a part of my brain I ever thought I'd have or use. You know, it was one of those things you got to do it and then you graduate. You never have to do it again, ever, ever, ever. Well, here I am in the digital marketing space using my research knowledge. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband and I laugh a lot because we both view ourselves not really as academic people. And um, here we are doing, or here he's not, but I'm doing literally analytical research for my posts, my content. Yeah. So it's uh, it's funny how it evolves. Yeah. Well, Care, AKA Care Bear, you are a rock star. It's been great to catch up with you. L love it. Uh, look forward to continuing to be a part of your journey and follow you on this extraordinary adventure that you're on. Um, let me know how I can continue to support you. And um, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. All right, my friend. We'll talk to you later, okay? All right, everybody, you can go, you can find, you can follow care over at Instagram and TikTok, money.mama.care, spelled exactly how it sounds with a dot in the middle, money.mama, M-A-M-A, dot care, money.mama.care, Instagram and TikTok. Uh, my friends, if you hadn't heard, uh, we launched a new five-day challenge, learn, launch, leadchallenge.com. You can get the information and enroll. It's five bucks, one dollar a day to go through a completely new and revamped challenge that has some extraordinary information, detailed walkthroughs, uh, amazing mindset content. It explores the mechanics and the dynamics of launching your own information, digital marketing business. My friends, uh, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for your support, your wonderful comments. Uh, this is, you know, it, it continues to be a pleasure to do this for you. Kelsey says, this was so good. Amanda, amazing, loved this. Michael, masterclass. What's up, Michael? Masterclass today. Bonnie, there's your Bonnie care. Woohoo, Caroline. Keep crushing it, my friend. What's her handle? We just put it up there money.mama.care. Uh, wow. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, wonderful. Hey, mm, thinking Berkshire Buffett stockholders meeting the other day, transparency, Mike, you got it, buddy. Buffett is that, you know, there's no tricks about Warren Buffett. That's the thing. If you ever watch in, of course, the, the late great Charlie Munger rest in peace. It was cute and sad. Uh, time when Warren during his stockholder meeting the other day tried to toss it over to Charlie and he wasn't there. He recently passed away at 99. Um, but yes, Warren Buffett, the greatest investor of all time, also the most honest, the most simple, the most transparent man you will ever hear speak about investing. Um, go and watch one of his stockholder meetings. Go and listen to him talk and understand that success doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be rooted in deception or manipulation or tricks. It's rooted in being consistent over a long period of time. And he is an avid reader. He's an avid student. He's somebody who every day reads four to six hours a day in his industry. That's how he learns and in, 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 in grows and gathers information. The point is, is that he's 
addicted to his craft. He understands that in order to be a better investor, he has to be more knowledgeable and he has to always remain a student. Um, thanks for bringing that up, Mike. Uh, integrity and tenacity is always what I want people to know about me, Kim. Great. Good, good for you. Uh, I really need to replay this as Catherine. This is so amazing. Good to, to hear that all of you are on the same page and that you're loving. Yes. Fact check everything. Uh, smart people check the facts for sure. Uh, my friends, it's just a pleasure to, to be reading these comments. Thanks for all the loving support for care as well. Uh, just, um, just really appreciate you all. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. Go ahead and check out legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll to check out our programs, get started, get off the sidelines, get in the game. And my friends, we'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. As always, get out of here. Have a great day.